In the last video I did, I went over what things would look like in a grid down apocalypse. And while that might seem a little bit hyperbolic to a lot of people, a nationwide grid down event would absolutely feel like an apocalypse after just a few days to a week. Infrastructure would be breaking down. Local services would be overwhelmed. Grocery stores would be completely empty and crime would be absolutely rampant. And in this type of situation, the last thing we want to be doing is having to go out looking for supplies. Today, I want to go over what some of our options are for power when all the fuel that we have stored runs out. While it's important to have different types of fuel stored for smaller scale emergencies, and I'll go into more detail on that in a minute, we also need to prepare for what we're going to do if it's all gone. And with this, we also need to think about security. And while this goes outside the scope of this video, it is important to think about how we are going to protect all of these different supplies that we have. And security goes for more than just the guns and the ammo, right? It also means operational security and situational awareness, staying out of dangerous situations. And like I said, that's not what we're going to be talking about today, but it is important to think about. And while we are going to be talking about different energy sources once your fuel runs out, I did want to mention that it is important to store these different types of fuel, multiple different types of fuel, because it's going to make rationing and things like that easier. The different types, and this goes for food as well, the different types of fuel you have, the different types of food you have will give you different options and will be, you'll be able to, if you're not just using propane every day, that's going to last a little bit longer if you have some foods that don't require any heating or any fuel to cook with. You've got other fuel options that can, you can use for a few different things. It'll make all of those last longer. But in the long run, all of that is eventually going to run out and we need to have options to prepare for those situations. Now, keep in mind as we go through these today, some of them will be something that is, is would be useful for you. Some of them may not. Solar energy wouldn't work too well in really cloudy areas. But we need to think about how viable each of the, these options might be. A few key considerations, too, in preparedness when you're talking about long-term energy is assessing your energy needs. Now, this doesn't mean your energy wants. This doesn't mean you're going to be able to power everything you, you can in your house today. What you're going to need to do is sort of make a list of all the things that you're going to want power for, whether that is different cooking methods, whether that's refrigeration, light, heat, things like that. Make that list and then you can get an idea of how much energy you're actually going to need. Or maybe you need to whittle that down and figure out what's realistic. Another one that is a big issue is your space and the portability of these different power sources. If you live in an apartment, you're not going to be able to do as much as somebody that's got a few acres or a home with some land. And portability also plays a factor because there could be times when you're traveling and some of these energy sources that we're talking about could be you know, on the higher end. So maybe you want to use those for camping and other things. That way it's not just sitting on the shelf waiting for one of these long-term SHTF events. So space, portability, your location, and your power needs all play a factor when we're talking about all of these options that we're going to go over today. And as you're figuring out your power needs, you need to think about all the different things you're going to need power for. Cooking is a big one, probably the biggest one on this list. How, what types of meals are you going to cook and how are you going to cook those? Communications is another one, whether you're talking about ham radios, FRS radios, even just regular radios, the weather radios. Thinking about how you're going to communicate, even cell phones and things like that. Communications is going to be a big one as well. Even though in a situation like this, the cell networks are probably down, Cell phones these days are useful for much more than just, you know, talking back and forth with the family members. You've also got light and refrigeration. When it comes to refrigeration, there are a few methods, even DIY methods. I've done a video recently on a mini fridge and a chest freezer, how you can keep that powered up using very little power. You've also got heating and cooling and tools, power tools. Now, granted, you have manual tools that you should have and you could use, but having a cordless drill that's charged up is going to come in super handy or even a, a cordless chainsaw, things like that will make things a whole lot easier. 
All right, so now that we've got these important things that we need to be thinking about off the table, let's go through what some of these options are. And I'll start off with the first one, which is probably the most popular and the easiest one for a lot of people. And that's the portable power stations, even the smaller portable, you know, the, the power banks, the smaller ones to charge cell phones and things like that. And while those aren't going to last, uh, you know, for they're, they're not going to work for larger appliances and things like that. Having a bunch of these just laying around the house is, is a good idea. It gives you more options. And when it comes to the larger appliances, that's where some of these larger power banks and even the solar power banks come into play. I've got a few different power stations and I've even put together my own DIY battery bank. And recently the folks over at La Ligra sent me a 2,500 watt power station to review and had been playing around with it for the last couple of days and it's awesome. But this 2,500 watt power station is great because it gives you that energy you're going to need for some of those larger appliances, whether that's drills, grinders, blenders, hot plates, things like that. It's, it's that power station that will give you enough energy to get just about anything done that you need to. Now, I think this one, this 2,500 watt, this is about the smallest I would go for a situation like this. They make much larger ones, but with the larger ones also comes, if you're talking about solar, you're going to need a whole lot of solar panels and, and it's going to take longer to charge these. So this one right here, in my opinion, I think is sort of the sweet spot. It's something that with my three 300 watts of solar panels, I can charge this in about a day if I depleted it all the way. So it's something that I could use that day and be able to refill the energy that I used fairly quickly. Like I said, I'll be doing a review on this Laligra here shortly, but just playing around with it the last few days, it's a, a really cool unit. And I did mention solar, which is one of the most popular options out there. But again, like I talked about earlier, it depends on your location. If you live in Washington, it may not be ideal. You may be able to still get some power from it, but I wouldn't put a huge investment into solar if you live up there. If you live somewhere in New Mexico, some, somewhere here in Colorado, we get quite a bit of sun. It's a good option out here in Colorado. The solar is. So that's something that I've been focusing on. That is one of those renewable energy sources that really when you're talking about a long term grid down event where fossil fuels, the, you know, gas stations are empty and that fuel runs out. It's not like Hollywood where all of a sudden there's or even Mad Max where they're fighting over a big tanker of fuel. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be non-existent. So these renewable energy options are really important. And solar is one of the big ones out there. Another benefit of solar and these power banks is that they're scalable. So like right now, I have three solar panels. I can add to that. I can add to my battery bank. With more solar panels means I can charge all these different power stations that I have and have them charged up. So if I have more solar panels, I could charge this La Ligra in just a few hours. And then the rest of the day, I could be charging my other power bank. So it's scalable and it's something that you can do over time. Get a, get a solar panel here, a solar panel there, and pretty soon you've got enough to generate quite a bit of power. And along with the power banks and the solar power, you've also got just regular Life PO4 batteries, right? The, the popular ones are the 100 amp hour, 12 volt Life PO4 batteries. With these, you would need one, you would need the solar to be able to recharge those or another method to recharge those, some of the things we're talking about in this video. And you'd also need an inverter that you can hook up to that and take that DC power and turn it into AC current for your appliances. The best option these days are the Life PO4 batteries, and these are one step above the lithium ion batteries. These have a lot more safety features, so these are not the ones that you see blowing up all the time, although that is possible, I suppose, as well. And they have a much longer lifespan. The charging and recharging cycles are around four times as much. So if you are looking at getting a 100 amp hour battery or something like that, the days of the lead acid battery are basically over when you're talking about preparedness and life PO4 batteries are the go to. You can get a 100 amp hour battery, a low cost one for around $300 all the way up to, you know, over $1,000. It really depends on you. But Life PO4 batteries are one of those where you can set it. It's got a low discharge rate, so you just keep it topped off over time. And as long as you've got an inverter, you've got the, the ability to run some lights or whatever you need to. 
Next, you've also got wind power and the, the little small wind turbines or even the larger ones that you would put in your backyard. Now these, it, it, you know, it's not as efficient necessarily as solar power, but if you live in a place where you do get quite a bit of wind, this could be a really good option. Say, like I talked about in Washington, if you live in an area where it's just windy all the time and not sunny all the time, this may be a good option for you. They make really small units for camping. They make large units for your backyard. They even have a little unit, I believe it's called the Shine, and it's basically just a portable power bank that recharges itself with as long as you have like eight miles an hour of wind. So there are quite a few of options when it comes to wind, but it's it really depends on your location. I'm going to get one of these, probably one of the lower cost ones, because I don't have a whole lot of wind out here, and I'm not sure how viable this would be for me, but I do want to test it out and see. If it does work, then maybe I put some more money into it and, and go that route, but I'm going to start off small, see how see how it works, and if it is something that I, is, that I could scale and and turn it into a viable option, then I'll do that. But really depends on your location if wind power is right for you. And one more thing on the wind power, they do also make hybrid systems, which is solar and wind. Again, I've used Washington as an example a couple of times, but up there, something like this may be a good idea because there would be a few days where you would get solar, you would get light, and solar would be a good option to just harness that energy. But in those times when solar is not available, you also have that wind energy. And even some days where you get the, the ability to capture both at the same time. Another one that you don't hear about all the time is the hydropower. And if this is because most of us don't live by lakes or streams or anywhere where this would be a viable option. But if you do have a bug out location or a homestead or something like that where you do have that stream that's constantly running by or even a river, you could set up one of these and it would absolutely be something that you would want to do. Harness that energy, even if it's just a little bit, you've got it right there, so why not? And hydro, all of these different, the wind power, the hydro power, and the solar power, all basically work the same. You take that energy, you put it into an alternator, basically, that generates current, and then you store that energy in a battery. Then you take that energy in that battery and use it for whatever you need to do. Now, another option would be kinetic power. And to me, this is sort of a last resort emergency type method. You've got the K-Tours where they're the, the pedal machines basically. So you use this pedal machine to generate a little bit of power. They've even got some of the hand crank devices that you can use to get enough energy to get a little bit on your cell phone. But to me, in a situation where you're going to be rationing food and calories might be slim, I don't know how much you're going to want to be doing something like this. And for the amount of energy you would get, there are just other options that are, are better, I think. But in a true emergency, I've got nothing else. This is one of those, especially if you've got a large group, uh, you could trade off pedaling and, and get that done using human power, the kinetic power, rather than having solar or wind or hydro or anything like that. So there are a few options. You just need to figure out what is most viable for your area, your budget, and, and everything that you need to think about as far as how much energy you need and start planning right now. And the best thing about this is it you don't have to wait for, with all these energy options, you don't have to wait until it's some sort of long-term SHTF, grid down apocalypse type situation. These are things that can be used every day. I've got my DIY battery bank that I built and I use that on a daily basis. I use that to power my mini fridge and my chest freezer, which is my overflow freezer. So it gets used every day. And in the event something does happen, I do have that energy available. Like I said, I've got a bunch of the really small power packs. I've got a few different power stations. And like I said, I just got this La Ligra, which is the biggest one that I've got. And I think with these bigger ones, it gives you the option to, uh, it gives you a lot more options when you're talking about a grid down situation. As I said earlier, though, it is important to store these different types of fuels. Think about the different types of fuels that we need to have stored, the different types of meals that we're going to prepare and how we're going to cook those and have all those ready. 
because while it's important to prepare for some sort of long-term, you know, grid down type situation, most likely what we're going to face is that one, to a couple days max. So that situation where you need to cook dinner one night and maybe possibly the next night, those are going to be the situations that you need to think about. But if you have 20, 40, 60 gallons of propane stored, that's going to last a long time. And if you can stretch that out by having a little butane stove, alcohol burners, things like that, where you don't need to use that propane on a daily basis, that's going to last longer. And, it, and in turn, it's going to, any of these renewable energy sources you have, it's gonna make those last longer, or you're gonna be able to use them for other things rather than just cooking. So it's important to prepare for the small stuff. That's the stuff that's most likely to happen to us. But as we are doing this, over the course of time, we need to start thinking about what we're going to do for these longer term type situations, because eventually this is going to run out. And this applies to energy as well as your food and everything else. Eventually, everything that you have is going to run out or, you know, could be stolen. That's why the security is such a big deal. you got to plan for those times when you're not going to have those. What are you going to do at that point? And that's where all of this stuff comes in. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a review on that La Ligra power station that I just got. Uh, looks like a fantastic little power station, and it's better priced than a lot of the ones out there. Uh, make sure and watch out for that video. Make sure and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I do new videos or whenever that video comes out. But with that, everyone, take care and prepare. We will talk to you all later.